everything that we've done in this unit so far with electromagnetic radiation has assumed that light is a wave. Right from the very beginning of this unit, we said there were four properties of waves that were exhibited by electromagnetic radiation. We said there was refraction, we said there was polarization, and then diffraction and interference, which we've been talking about in a lot more detail in the last few days. Light is a wave, and we still think, we still believe that light is a wave. But just over 100 years ago, we established that light is not just a wave, but rather light is also a particle. It has what we now say a wave-particle duality, a dual nature associated with it. A guy named Max Planck comes along just over 100 years ago and introduces something that we call quantum theory. Quantum theory, in its most basic form, was revolutionary. It said that energy is quantized. And what we mean by that term quantized is that energy can exist only in certain values. You can have this much energy or double that or triple that or quadruple that, but not anything in between. Okay, an example, an analogy. You're walking up the stairs. Okay, on the first step on the stairs, you have, let's say, 100 joules of potential energy. What are your allowable amounts of potential energy? Well, on the first step, you've got 100. On the second step, you've got 200. On the third step, you've got 300, right? The energy of you as you're walking up those stairs is quantized. You can have 100, or you can have twice that, or three times that, or four times that, or so on. Max Planck said on a much more fundamental, much more microscopic, much more basic level that energy is quantized. You can have this much energy of vibration causing electromagnetic radiation in objects, or you can have double that, or you can have triple that, or quadruple that, but you can't have anything in between. That's the beginning of quantum theory. Now, Einstein, mentioning his name for the first time, it's kind of funny that here we are, here we are almost through physics 30, We've gone all the way through physics 20 and most of the way through physics 30, and we've never mentioned the name of probably the most famous physicist ever to be on the face of the Earth. Einstein extended Planck's idea to talk about the energy, not just general energy of vibration of particles, but rather the energy of light, the energy of electromagnetic radiation. Einstein said that if, if light is energy, and energy is quantized, then the energy of light must be quantized as well. In other words, light can have this much energy, or it can have that much energy, or it can have two times that, three times that, four times that, five times that, whatever. In other words, light's more like a little particle as opposed to a wave. If we throw a rock, it has a certain amount of, of energy, right? A certain amount of kinetic energy. Well, if you throw a second rock, you have twice that. If you throw a third rock, you have three times that. So light's like a particle. Max Planck said energy is quantized. Einstein said, well, then that means that light is a particle as opposed to just a wave. We're not suggesting here that, that light is not a wave, right? That it's a particle, solely a particle. We're now suggesting that light is a wave and a particle. A particle that we call a photon. Strictly speaking, we define a photon as a quantum of energy. But really what it means, like not the real definition, but really what it means is a particle of light, a little chunk of light. Don't even try to visualize this photon, because right now, as you're, as you're thinking of it, probably you're, you're, you're visualizing it as like a little pebble or a little rock or a tiny little baseball moving through the air. Well, that's not exactly what it is. It's got that particle nature, but it's also at the same time has this wave nature associated with it. You can visualize the particle nature, you can visualize the wave nature, but you can't visualize the particle wave nature duality that it has. We're not talking about a particle that's bobbing up and down on a wave or that's following the wave like a boat, we're talking about the particle that is a wave. It's both a wave and a particle. Now we're going to spend the next 
several days talking about not the wave nature of light that we've been talking about all units so far, but rather that particle nature. We're not throwing out the wave nature, it's still there, but we're now going to talk about the other aspect of it that we now know exists, the particle nature. All right. Well, Max Planck established that the energy, the allowable energies were equal to a certain constant times the frequency, the frequency of vibration. Einstein just stole that equation and said the energy of a photon is equal to that certain value that we call Planck's constant, H, times the frequency of that photon. The energy of a particle of light in joules or electron volts, we haven't seen that unit in a while for energy, but we will see it again now for the next week. The energy of that photon, of that particle of light, is equal to a constant times the frequency of the EMR. And that's going to be measured in hertz. I mean, look at that equation, guys. Look at that equation. It's not, it's not discounting the wave nature of EMR at all. It's adding to it by, by adding this, this particle nature. Look, if we're talking about the frequency of EMR, clearly Einstein's not saying there is no wave nature. He, you can't have a frequency if you don't have a wave nature. He's saying, look, there is a wave nature. Everything we said about EMR up until 1905-ish is correct. But we also have this particle nature, this nature of individual photons, individual quanta of energy carrying this energy that exists in this electromagnetic radiation. All right, this other value, H, Planck's constant, You come up with photon theory, sorry, you come up with quantum theory. The first guy to say that, that energy is quantized, you can't just have any amount of energy, it has to be this or double that or triple that. You deserve to get a constant named after you. So he gets a constant, Planck's constant, named after him. Its value is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joules seconds, or it could also be 6 point, sorry, 4.14 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volt seconds. Which one do you use? Well, it depends on what you want your units for energy to be in. Yeah, I got an energy in joules, then I want to use this Planck's constant. I got an energy in electron volts, then I want to use this value of Planck's constant. Decide individually for each question which value of Planck's constant you're going to use based on what units you're using throughout the rest of the question. Most of the equations that we've done this year have said, look, you got to use these units, this unit, right? Always, in almost every equation. You got some options here. Joules or electrons work just fine because, the, because there's two values of the constant. All right, let's do a quick little example here to illustrate this wave, sorry, this particle nature of EMR, this photon theory. This idea that light exists as a quantum of energy, as opposed to just a wave of energy. All right, so 14.1 on 706 says, how much energy is carried by a photon of red light of wavelength 600 nanometers? Well, look, we know that E is equal to HF, but we don't know what frequency is, right? But we do know that V is equal to F times lambda, or if we're talking about light, we could oftentimes say C is equal to F times lambda, F is equal to C over lambda, we could replace F with C over lambda. You don't like deriving the equation like that every time. Good news is both of these forms of the equation appear on your data sheet. E is equal to HF, Planck's constant times the frequency, but also Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. We're going to use the last part of it. Now, what value of Planck's constant do you want to use? It depends on what units you want your energy to be in. If you want it to be in joules, then let's use 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. If you happen to want it to be in electron volts, then use the other value of Planck's constant, 4.14. Multiply that by the speed of light in a vacuum. 
divide it by lambda, which is 600 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. 3 divided by 6 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 6.63 is 3.315 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Joules because we went with 6.63 as our value for Planck's constant. We're going to round that, by the way, to three digits. So make it 3.32 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. If you wanted it in electron volts, you could have gone with the other value of Planck's constant, or you could take this value of energy in joules and convert that to electron volts using the conversion that we did back in unit two, our electricity unit. Either way works. All right, three questions in 706.